In this video, we are going to discuss a poem which is written by A.K. Ramanujan. A.K. Ramanujan is an Indian poet, is born in Mysore and died in Chicago. And it is important to know the birth and death year of A.K. Ramanujan. Is, he was is born in 1929 and was died in 1993 in Chicago. He was a well-known poet in Indian English literature has uh, contributed in writing Indian English literature like um, poems, translation works, essays and number of uh, anthologies for which he, he was awarded highest uh, um, achievement by the government of India. He has contributed to the writing of Indian English literature uh, in both in uh, English and Canada. Not only that, he is a poet, he is a philologist, folklorist, translator and playwright. Uh, he was awarded Sahitya Academy Award posthumously in 1999 uh, for the collected poems uh, by the government of India. Though he wrote uh, widely and a number of genres, Ramanujan's poems are remembered as uh, enigmatic works of um, originality. And let us look at the notable works uh, that uh, he has written and by which he was um, become famous that the striders second sight relations uh, and this works uh, uh, published in 1971 and when you're looking at the works uh, which are translated by ak ramanujan is the interior landscape love poems from a classical tamil anthology and uh, speaking of siva which is uh, published in 1973 the Literatures of India, Hymns for the Drowning in 1981, Poems of Love and War 1985, Folk Tales from India, Oral Tales from 20 Indian Languages. Is that an Indian way of thinking? When God is the Customer, Telugu Curtain Songs by um, Setraya and others in the year 1994, uh, Flowering Tree and other Oral Tales from India. Uh, from this video, we are going to, uh, we are not going to just um, look at the life and uh, career of A.K. Ramanujan and uh, uh, in this video, we are going to uh, particularly um, uh, looking at the poem called Snakes. Uh, when you are reading, uh, uh, before you are reading this poem uh, Snakes, what comes to your mind when you are thinking about snakes or uh, uh, when you are uh, spotting a uh, a creature called uh, snakes what comes to your mind uh, whether you want you want to uh, uh, have such a creature uh, near or you 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 like to approach the creature snakes uh, as uh, you're approaching other pet animals no uh, we should we we always have fear upon such a creature um, like uh, snakes and other poisonous beings but most importantly we are always having such a, a terror and um, panic on seeing such um, uh, snakes like creatures. In this poem, A.K. Ramonujan has memorized his childhood experience. So one day he has uh, spotted a snake when he was a, a boy. Uh, before he uh, he was got rid of uh, uh, innocence, uh, he used to have such terror and fear of uh, uh, seeing or facing snakes wherever he was spotted. And now, um, when this poem was written, he was almost 60 or uh, um, 70 years old. Uh, at the time, he had remembered that how he, he had been grown up with uh, childhood memories. Uh, among, uh, there are so many uh, childhood memories, but one memory, one is that he could not easily forget that uh, when he was a boy, he had spotted a snake or else uh, even after spotting snake uh, lively, after that, wherever he had traveled or wherever he had gone, he was reminded of snakes. So whatever uh, which is um, resembled of uh, the body of snakes, he used to uh, remember that day uh, where he was a boy. Even at the age of 60, uh, he, he has gone to library or he has gone to museum or uh, the places where he used to spend his uh, time as a, a writer. Uh, immediately he would remind, uh, he would uh, remind of uh, uh, snakes that he had uh, spotted in childhood. Uh, such impact was created in the heart of the uh, uh, poet A.K. Ramonujan and he started to write a poem uh, called Snakes in which he has contributed, he has remembered his childhood experience of uh, uh, facing uh, snakes. But now, um, 
he has never such a fear of uh, facing snakes uh, here he is trying to uh, compare the childhood de childhood days and uh, adulthood days uh, but, uh, in the in the stage of adulthood he never fears of snakes but in the stage of um, childhood he uh, he has uh, uh, so much of fear about uh, um, seeing or uh, thinking about uh, snakes so what is uh, he has later realized that what is the um, connection between the two stages that in childhood he was innocent and in adulthood stage he is not innocent he has realized that he has gained confidence and he was able to get rid of fear of uh, facing snakes and now uh, he is in full age he has achieved so many uh, works and now at this stage of having su succeeded in so many problems uh, through his hard working he has never uh, thinking about snakes which is meant to be giving a fear to the people who are spotting here in this poem also he is uh, is been trying to uh, advise the readers that uh, the childhood days will always be innocent and be fearful but uh, you have to uh, overcome those fear and uh, by getting into adulthood life you have to sacrifice you have to struggle hard in order to achieve a life like adult cult where the poet has no fear of snakes as he had been in fear when he was a child let us look at the poem where he is trying to mention that how he had fear and now in this stage of adult cult he has never thought of being a feared of snakes this kind of an advice to the readers like he, here uh, the fear of snake is uh, compared or metaphorically uh, compared to a life uh, the, the life is always uh, uh, giving fear to us but we uh, we should never have any fear of uh, uh, facing problems in life the first line of the poem begins as no it doesn't happen when i walk through the woods but walking in museum of uh, quads uh, or the aisles of book stacks uh, looking at the uh, geometry without the curves and the layers of transparency that make them opaque, dwelling on the yellow vein in the yellow amber or touching a book that has gold on its spine, I think of snakes. So in the first uh, uh, stanza of the poem, he is uh, uh, mentioned that uh, the very first word uh, begins as no. He started with the uh, word no, it doesn't happen when I walk through the woods, which means uh, when he is uh, going through the woods, he himself uh, telling that no, it doesn't happen, which it, it means no fear. It doesn't fear me. It doesn't fear me. That is why he says no. No means I have no fear of uh, thinking about snakes now. So now he has no fear of thinking about snakes or even when he is going through the woods, uh, facing or thinking about the snake is never giving any kind of fear to the poet but in walking in museum of quartz or aisles of book stacks but uh, when he approaches the snakes in realistically he has no fear but when he is going into the museum he remembers the snake because in the inside the uh, museum or uh, uh, library the structure of the book, the way the book uh, book, book has been uh, um, set up in the uh, in the rack or uh, the cupboard, uh, the way those cupboard or rack has been arranged as the snakes uh, have been um, uh, found. So when he is going into the path of the library, the structure of the uh, catalog, the, the structure of the rack which gives to the uh, poet that they resembled snakes and when he's trying to uh, take a book from the rag the way the book has been uh, arranged that reminds the poet that there there is a snake hidden there is a snake hidden uh, among the books because the way that the book has been arranged in a zigzag manner and uh, or the aisles of books the aisles of book stacks in the sense between the two racks in the library there is a passage in uh, for the readers to pass uh, and uh, every rack or uh, cupboard has been uh, put in the zigzag way so you when readers uh, is going into the library they have to go in zigzag way uh, that zigzag way remembers to the poet that it is a kind of a body of a snakes and whenever he is uh, turning to uh, one, one rack to another rack he remembers about the snakes and looking at the geometry without curves and whenever he is looking at the geometry tools also he remembers about the snakes 
and the layers of transparency that make them opaque and the layers of transparency that make them opaque and whenever he is looking at the way that these geometry uh, tools has been arranged because th there is a transparency uh, when the tools are uh, arranged by uh, above and above uh, due to the transparency uh, those tools are uh, kept below uh, from uh, one tool to another tool uh, the transparency uh, gives the idea or image of the snakes he says that make make them opaque it is a kind of an uh, structure of the snakes that the geometry tools giving to the poet and dwelling on the yellow vein and whenever he is going into the garden and looking at the flowers after plucking a particular flower the yellow vein also remembers to the poet that there is a snake the yellow amber you can see that the on the in on the uh, flower or inside the uh, flower or in the part of a stem uh, you you could see that the yellow bear vein so when he's seeing the yellow vein what comes to his mind that it is it is looking like a snake and in the yellow amber also it's a it's kind of a flower so when uh, the flowers uh, uh, resemble as if they are uh, part of a snake's body or touching a book that has gold on its spine and when he touches a book in the library uh, he remembers about it is it's looking like a snake because when he's touching that book that has gold on its spine on spine in the sense back part of the book uh, back part of the book in the sense the joining of the pages that has been uh, uh, which which has been uh, tied by the uh, sticker or cloth uh, into which all the pages will be uh, stuck together uh, that is called backbone like so as we have backbone in the book also there is a backbone into which all the pages will be uh, stuck and will be tied that is called spine that spine is giving in the color of golden color so that when he touching the book the spine part will be glittered due to the color of the gold and where he immediately remembers that there is a snake he says i think of snake so so in the first stanza uh, he says that wherever he is been uh, going uh, those objects uh, and the objects the, the way the, those objects are arranged uh, that they are looking uh, image of snakes and in the second stanza, the trails of their hisses rise like the tiny dust cones on slow noon roads, winding through the farmer's feet. Black long nets are etched on their hoods, ridiculous, alien, like some terrible aunt, a crest among tiles and scales that mold with the darkening of, of every moon. In this stanza, the poet A.K. Ramanujan is remembering that this is not from the childhood memories and when he is going into the public places like whenever he is going across a paddy field or uh, on the village side normally villagers don't wear chapels they would uh, walk on barefoot so when the villagers are going on barefoot the dust or the the lightweight soil uh, would wind through the feet of the villagers since the villagers uh, don't wear chapels and whenever the soil or dust uh, rounding around the feet of the villagers the villagers would uh, think that uh, what they are thinking that uh, snake is rounding our, uh, over the feet like that he feels the twelves of their hisses rise like the tiny dust cones on slow noon roads noon road in the sense in the noon time when the sun is on top of the sky at that time uh, you could observe that the dust will rise up like dust cones so cone is it's a kind of a shape uh, like that the dust will be uh, emerged and after that the dust cones will be winding over the feet of the farmers black long nets are etched on their hoods and also uh, imagining that after seeing the face of the snakes that image remembers to the poet that the snakes is wearing kind of a spectacles uh, that are etched on their hoods hoods means head of the snakes 
and you could uh, see that in some of the snakes the eyes will be uh, rounded and both eyes are uh, uh, on above the uh, above and uh, below uh, the neck you could uh, see that there will be black dots both dots will be connected with uh, line that is called a uh, long nets uh, it is uh, compared to a uh, uh, terrible aunt and in some of the movies like uh, uh, in one of the movies of Rajinikanth the movie's name is uh, Mapilai and, and in that movie uh, actress Vidya would wear such spectacles and uh, she would be playing a role of a villain and she is wearing such kind of spectacles and uh, on both sides of the spectacles there will be chain will be uh, hanging uh, over the neck like that. Uh, to the snakes also uh, there will be black dots both dots will be connected by a line he remembers so when he sees um, uh, the that kind of image of the snakes he remembers and uh, trying to compare to the terrible aunt so, so uh, the aunt is always having such a terrible expressions uh, those same expressions is compared to the snake a crest among tiles and the scales that mold with the darkening of, of every moon here the crest, crest in sense the head, uh, from the head to ending part, the entire body of the snakes, uh, you could see that the, the entire body is uh, uh, covered with the scales, scale in the sense skins, the tiles and the skins, the tiles and the uh, scales uh, have been uh, uh, applied over the body of the snakes that mold with the darkening of, of every moon, then this is compared to the uh, moon. So, when in every month, in every month, in uh, 15 days moon will be bright and another 15 days moon will be uh, off dark and that is off dark and off bright is uh, that off dark and off bright can be uh, seen over the body of the snakes and where you can see such uh, a difference is that the, over the tiles and the scales of the uh, skin of the uh, snakes. And every every month, the uh, how moon uh, re reduces its brightness. Snakes also uh, removing the uh, skin, removing the skin of the uh, skin of the body. So in a once in a month, once in a month, the snakes will remove the skin of that. Like that, the moon also uh, once in a month, the moon will be dark. So it is compared to the moon. Then another stanza, a basket full of ritual cobras comes into the tame little house. It is, uh, it is the stanza uh, remembered from the real life when he was a small boy. Uh, one day a basket full of ritual cobras is uh, uh, come into the house of uh, the poet. Uh, he says a basket full of ritual cobras. So ritual cobras is used for the uh, temple and worshipping purpose. And such snakes are kept into the basket and carried by a, a snake charmer is taking the basket full of cobras to the house of the poet, the tame, tame little house. Because the tame little house means uh, that snake is once it is, the, the snake is released from the basket, it will not be escaped easily. So wherever he, it is going around, it will be going as if it is in the hole. That is uh, that is why the poet says tame little house of the poet. They are brown wheat glisten winged with ripples. And when when it's slithering over the floor, the skin will be glittered. Um, the glittering the color of the glittering will be brown. So you could uh, you could have uh, observed the color of the uh, skin of the snake. That that gives the color of the. Uh, uh, brown wheat, wheat color will be reflected over the body of the snakes and they lick the room with their bodies and once the, they are taken out of the basket, the snakes would start to uh, lick the floor with their tongues and the curves uncurling, sometimes curving and sometimes uncurling and writing a sibilant alphabet of panic on my floor and uh, after releasing from the basket, it would be slithering over the floor and by uh, some time, uh, the, the snakes will uh, take out its uh, tongue and by the tongue, uh, uh, what the poet understand that the snakes is trying to write something over the floor that is the uh, letter of alphabetical letters, sibilant alphabet of letter which means sibilant means that snakes trying to write something magical words on the floor in order to control the small boy. The small boy fears that by writing something magical words, the snakes is trying to uh, control uh, the small boy who is the who is the poet and uh, when 
the poet is fearing of snakes but mother doesn't fear what is mother doing mother gives them milk in saucers right? and she is serving milk in the saucer to the snakes and she watches them suck how they are, how the snakes uh, drinking the milk and uh, and after some time the snake is um, uh, 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 tasting the entire uh, milk from the uh, saucer and etched on the brass of the saucer and by the help of the tongue the snakes will uh, taste the entire milk it, it wouldn't uh, leave any one drop of milk in the saucer the entire milk will be licked by the snakes and the, uh, the snake man reads their writhing round his snake for, for the smiling and what the snake charm is doing uh, he will take one of the snakes and putting around his snake and uh, and uh, writhing around his snake uh, like uh, putting around his snake so uh, what is understood that the snake charmer has no fear of uh, uh, putting the snakes around his uh, neck and seeing that scene the father is smiling the father gets um, uh, enthusiastic uh, uh, that the snake uh, doing such uh, um, manner the snake charmer has no fear for which he is giving money to the snake man and the next stanza says that the sister ties her braids with a knot of tassel and he has a sister so whenever the sister ties her braids with a knot of tassel it's a kind of a, a hair style um, used in the traditional uh, time and it is a long hair uh, band so with the hair band that gives the image of the snake to the poet and the weave of her knee long braid has snake and the sister has the longest hair whenever the longest hair is hanging from the head of the sister we see uh, the poet is seeing from the back that he remembers that the hair the longest hair is nothing but the snake they are gle gleaming held by a score of clean new pins and the longest hair is uh, tied by the uh, glittering new pins new hair pins so all the uh, new hair pins will be glittering as if those uh, uh, those are like uh, uh, sometime uh, you could uh, you could have seen that the body of the snake will be glitter they will be brightened in the uh, lifetime so when you are when you are touching over the body of the snakes the the color the skin of the uh, snake will be brightened like that he he has sister uh, she is uh, putting number of hair pins over the hair and those hair pins are glittering because of the new pins that she is doing i look till i see her uh, hair again and uh, again and again i i want to confirm that whether this hair is uh, uh, my sister hair or it is like a snake and my night full of ghost from a sadness in a place and after that he he he, he could not sleep well and in the time of sleep he remembers only the snake the snake comes into his dream and tortures him my left foot listen to my right foot and there will be great silence even when he is walking he could not hear anything than the foot the sound of the foot the left the left leg sound will be heard by the right leg a clock were clicking in the silence within my walk and when i when i'm walking alone in my room there will be no silence but the silence of clockwork the clock sound only will be repeatedly heard the click shot heel suddenly strikes and the slashes on a snake and one one day i i walked into the forest my heel my foot my foot suddenly strikes and lashes on a snake and i really stumbled on a snake Uh, it is like uh, i am walking on the mud path when when you are walking on the mud path your feet has uh, the, the, your feet doesn't feel such um, hardness slush slush is a mud when you are walking in the mud you could feel that it is very soft to walk such a feeling that the poet has having uh, because he stumbled on the he standing on the snake body and after that after stumbling on the snake i see him that the i could uh, after uh, the the entire body was a turn i could see that i could see only the belly part of the snake and you could see the belly part will be uh, having a number of layers and layers the belly the belly this is stomach part will be uh, like layers and layers green white the color of the belly is green and white measured by bluish nodes a uh, bluish nodes in the sense round and round so the entire body part the entire stomach the bottom part of the body will be round and round that is called nodes and nodes bluish nodes a water bleached lotus stack plucked by a landsman hand and that gives the the sight of lotus uh, stack lotus stack like the entire body is looking like a lotus stack which is recently plucked by a landsman so he is comparing to the uh, is comparing the 
the body the, the body of the snake with uh, wa with the lotus stack water bleached because the the lotus had been um, for long time inside the water so due to the water the wa the stem will uh, lose its color so it will be looking like a water bleached in such color the belly part of the snake is there and he uh, understands that it is like a, a lotus track and plugged by a farmer yet the panic crosses after though i wa i was stumbling on the real snake uh, my my panic rushes my entire body was uh, rushed to uh, having a fear my spasm ring and drain his fear and mine even though i got uh, something pain and uh, terror in my heart and in my ph entire physical part and i could uh, able to remove the fear by knowing that even though i was stumbling on the snake the snake doesn't hurt me the snake is not attacking me and i have no fear so even in the unconscious the the poet was stumbling on the snake he had no fear but it would be happen in the conscious if he is stumbling and my spans would ring and drain his fear and mine drain his fear and mine and i got rid of the fear drain means uh, to get rid of drain his fear and mine i leave him sealed and after realizing that i stood on the snake and the snake did not do anything against me so i need not, i need not have fear then i leave him sealed i leave him sealed in the sense i got rid of fear of snakes i got rid of fear of snakes a flat head whiteness on a stain and it was flat on the floor it was actually dead snakes it was actually a dead snake now frogs can hop upon this sausage rope and the poet is now comparing to the comparing the dead snake to the rope so it is it looks like a rope only it is just like a rope a rope will not do anything like that the snake will also not do anything he says frogs can hop now the snake is dead and the frogs can approach the snake and play with the body of the snake but when the snake is not died the snake will eat the frogs but now the snake is dead and now uh, frogs can darely come and play with the body of the snakes hop up, hop means rounding rounding over the body of the snakes so the frogs will be coming and rounding over the body because there is no fear of snakes to the frogs and the flies in the suns will mop the look in his eyes and not only that the frogs will rounding over the body flies also will be uh, rounding and rounding near by the eyes of the snakes mob means crowd the flies will be come into the crowd and will be uh, starting to round over the eyes of the snakes and i can walk through the woods since um, even after i stood over the body of the snakes i had no fear and before i stumbled on the snakes i could uh, i could not uh, uh, think that it is it is not a snakes but it is a snakes everywhere i i was turning i could remember of snakes but after i stumbled i stood on the uh, snakes i could not have i could not able to produce any kind of fear he says so i can walk through the woods so i can walk through the woods hereafter i have no fear of snakes whenever i am going through the woods like that the life is also in a distance when you are observing when you are uh, facing the life uh, there will be fear once you are going into the life and experiencing all aspects of problem there will be no fear to us the life will be easier this is what the poet is trying to uh, advise to the readers through this poem snakes